something I'm really certain in yeah? is that there are a lot of things that are uncertain. Oh. That's actually, yeah, that's actually a realization I've had this year. Can it's we, like, there's a lot more that I cannot control than I can. Can we please explore that? Yeah. Recording, recording, recording. I heard that there was like trauma and like I, I wasn't I'm trying to like dogs. listen I'm to. I'm afraid of dogs. Okay, yeah. I'm glad it's yeah. not something like, serious. I love, I love this weather, but yeah, yeah, I'm afraid of dogs. It's this, gotten a lot better. This weather particularly, or the the dog fear. I love wind. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so I love being here, but at the same time, it's like a little bit stressful. Okay, cause cool. Because there's dogs everywhere. So is do you? I normally what we have to talk about is something that really motivates you something you're really certain about, something you think is true? Any of those things for you? Um, something you're really confident I'm, about? Something I'm really certain in yeah? is that there are a lot of things that are uncertain. Oh! That's actually, yeah, that's actually a realization I've had this year. Can it's we, like, there's a lot more that I cannot control than I can. Can we please explore that? Yeah. You got, you're good with that? Yeah. Would you be cool hanging out? If you yeah. want to be part sure. of it too, I've never done two people at the same time. Sure. All right. So, five minute more. Oh, I'm Ty, by the way. I'm Emma. Nice to meet you. Emma, I'm Ty. I'm Katie. It's nice to meet you. You're Katie? I'm Katie. Sorry. Katie? <laughs> Katie, Katie, Emma. All right. Is that with a K? K yeah, K A T Y. I am always good at guessing how people spell them. <laughs> Two M's? Yes. Yeah. See? I'm on it. All right. Oh, I've actually never heard of an Emma with one N. That's kind of fun. Oh, I don't uh, know. I, I decided on the side of two e's. probability. <laughs> two e's. Yeah. All right. So you're most confident that, or you're most certain that most things are mm -hmm. uncertain. Mm -hmm. How did you come to that? Um, I think just a lot of things uh, being out of my control. Okay. So, like, so I'm a senior in high school this year, and so, like, this year is all about applying to college. Mm, um, yep, I know and that so feeling. so that's, like, a big uncertain thing because, like, you try your hardest, you put your best self out there, but yes. you still know no matter what, like, if you're like me and, like, three of the schools on your list are Ivy League schools, okay. it's, like it's a crapshoot at that level of school so it's like no matter how awesome i might be uh -huh. even if i am like qualified enough to do it there's too many qualified people what do you want to major in if you don't mind me asking you like, um where do you see not this stem you don't want to be stem no, you're breaking my heart <laughs> because yeah i, I should I, I was in the math science and technology program when i have these conversations I <laughs> When I have these conversations, I tend to just be like, you know, a neutral party. I'm just listening in and it's your life and it's uh -huh. a five minutes conversation with uh -huh. a stranger don't let it. But there are so few women in STEM and right. we need smart yeah. women. You seem like you're on it. You have like a really good foundational belief that you want to talk about. Like most things are uncertain. That's, that is the, the goal, you know, in mm -hmm. STEM. Like you want to figure to out those uncertain things. You want to find a little nugget of uncertainty and explore it and mm -hmm. figure it out. What, what doesn't make you excited about it? Um, so I was always really good at it, but mm -hmm. I just realized that I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Okay. And I, that's kind of an intrinsic thing. I couldn't tell you why I don't like it. Okay. It's just that the liberal arts appealed to me more. Okay. So I'm glad you point, didn't say basket weaving or something no. like that. All right. <laughs> no. No, I mean, I'm still interested in, like, social sciences. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I worked with someone here at UK, and we wrote, like, a sociology paper. Sure. Um... So yeah, sociology. I haven't actually taken psychology, but I would be interested in doing that. But it's like it's a whole mesh of things. It's like English and writing and photography, all right, and French and theater and all so, sorts of stuff. So what about uh, what is it about liberal science that makes you more or liberal studies that makes it more exciting for um, you that I think you don't get from me, STEM? To me, it feels more like human interaction. Okay. Okay. I cool. I think like with with other fields I feel like it's more isolated mm -hmm. but like with sociology I mean the whole point of what she was doing was like talking to people sure. to find stuff out about them and I, I think that's less lonely to me than going into STEM do you think that dynamic feeds into the more uncertainty uh, idea that you had at the start yeah I mean I think that I mean you can't ever know well okay that's gonna sound cryptic and weird but like you can't knows what really you're know that much you know about people oh you can't know that much about people i mean okay i think you can be pretty sure of things but okay. like if a person doesn't really know themselves 100 mm. percent, it's hard for anyone else i mean they can be confident in something but you have to be confident in that thing and also willing to accept that that might change yes so like the things that you know about someone yeah. as they grow into the person they're gonna be uh -huh. those could be totally different do you think there's anything that we can know for 100 percent certainty 
even is... um the sun will rise mm -hmm. until it explodes oh that's some stem <laughs> stuff <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My dad's my dad's a physics professor, so like okay. I can I can talk about it. I know okay. some stuff. Okay, like, cool. I don't know. I think I'm dark matter is really interesting to me, and that's about uncertainty. Like we know it's sure, there. We've sure. got no idea what's up with it. We just yeah. know it's like our universe couldn't exist if it wasn't there. Yeah, and it's so all over the place something. too. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that there are certain things that we can be certain about? That's kind of mm -hmm. where I was trying mm -hmm. to go. Is there anything that? Uh, uh, if if there is, I'm just trying to basically see like, where's the boundary? Yeah, where's like, the line? You know, you know that there's more uncertainty than certainty, and I think I agree with that too. I think that's pretty, you know, mm -hmm. an actual sanctioned point. But I'm wondering, where do you draw that line? Where is the line of, okay, and past this line, everything mm -hmm. here is certain. Mm -hmm. Do you have that, or is that also not really, a, not really? But one thing that I did hear at some point in the span of my life that was really interesting to me was like the only thing that we can be certain of is our own consciousness. Okay. Like, you get a little bit existential there where you're like, you don't really know, like, you can't, okay, not that I believe this, but you can't know that everyone else is real. True. But you can know that you yourself are real. I think that's also accurate, yes. So that was really cool to me. That I is think a... that that doesn't take into account, like, people who's consciousness itself might be more uncertain like people who might have any sort of like mental illness where they can't exactly trust their own perception of things but for the most part i think that's totally true okay katie how do you feel about certainty uncertainty certainty uncertainty yeah um i am a firm believer in that we each take our own um you know, reality and truth to things, and I don't think that there's any way that someone could fully understand one another's perspective. I think we can try as much as we can, but you know, you look around the world, and within one minute, there are like billions of people doing all these different things, and, yeah. and none of them are the same. Whether it's two people brushing their teeth, one could be going through a divorce, one could be having the best day of their lives, and no two experiences are the same because. Uh, and that's why I like poetry. That's why I like writing because it's it's in a textbook I was reading. Mm. It's a textbook about poetry. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, it, it defines the line between um, informational words or, or wording and then um, expressive wording. Okay. Experience. Okay. And so I think that there is a wonderful um, in absolute truth about individual truth. Oh. Like Plato's allegory of the cave. Yes. And then Tim O'Brien's the things they carry. As soon as you walk out of the cave, yeah. you're kind of blinded Look by the her. light. Yeah. So yes. Smart. Because no. So I'm eloquent. Not. There's like an absolute truth about individual <laughs> truth and the fact that we um, it was interesting because in his story he was talking about how he was drafted into Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Um and there's this one chapter in particular that really strikes me. It's called The Man I Killed. And he goes, like, the whole chapter is, is describing, like, the gory details of this person that he killed in Vietnam. Mm. And then the next chapter, he says that in an absolute truth sense, he did not kill a man. Mm. But in order to explain it to an audience that had never experienced that war, had never experienced his life, the only way where he could tell what was true to him. Because by just saying, like, he didn't kill anyone, that he was a coward in the war, mm. um, in his own words, you know, he there is another truth that is never going to be met. Another truth that is never yeah, going to be which met. which is his internal truth. And so by ex telling us that he killed someone, he is fulfilling that truth that is so often left unnoticed in our lives. And so I think, and I've talked about this with my boyfriend, uh, you know, there's an absolute truth about individual truth. Okay. And they, they, I don't think there's a contradiction between the two. I think they, they're, they marry together very well. And I'm very certain about that. And I'm very certain that we each have our own individual truths that we may never, ever be able to fully express. Do you think those universal truths apply, or the personal truths that we have, mm -hmm. apply to reality? Um, I think they apply to our reality, our perception of things, and our experience. Okay. I think those are very um, intimate to ourselves and how we... Um, you know, see the world. Um, could those personal truths be? Yeah. Could those personal truths be wrong or not apply to reality at all? I don't think a personal truth can really be wrong. Um, okay. There can be a happening truth, mm. but there's also an internal truth that goes beyond what happened. Okay. I think your because I think your hap your happening truth can be the same for two people experiencing it. Yeah. But I think your internal truth is only right for you. Is the experience interesting? Not the happening. Can I throw out? Two questions. I know, yeah. I know we're out of time, yeah, but sure. if you're in a rush, that's no cool. worries. No, we're, we're just not. here. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're staying just away walking. from dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it was personally true, uh, you you hit on a really interesting point: personal truths versus like an absolute or yeah. a universal truth. Um, 
I'm just trying to understand what you mean by personal truth. So I'm going to throw an yeah. example out. If it was personally true to me that like water and gasoline were the same thing, could I put Aquafina in my gas tank and drive to work? If that was personally true to me, could if I be, could I do that? Truth, if that's your way of expressing it, then yes. I would be able to drive to work on a bottle of Aquafina. If that's how you want to think of it, yes. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, how, it's how you think of it. Yeah, but would I actually be able to do that? For an absolute that'd be your truth happening. point of view? Yeah, that'd be your happening truth. Happening truth, no. But, I mean, you know, I guess part of your personal truth is a theoretical mm -hmm. happening, which yeah. in that sense, yes, I guess it could happen. So would a happening truth would yeah. override a personal truth with regards to how things actually comport with reality? I feel like a happening truth only shares half of the truth. It only shares part of it. I you should, can't get the whole thing. I should get both of you guys. <laughs> you should get her in the frame. <laughs> a happening truth only goes through um, part of the thing. He could he could have told them that he um, went through that war and he never really experienced killing anyone. But sure. he felt like because he didn't do anything that he that he was in no way of helping his troop. Yeah. And so he could ne he by saying that he didn't kill anyone, mm. that is expressing the happening truth. But it doesn't express his guilt mm. in an accurate sense that someone might understand. Mm -hmm. He can't just say I feel guilty. I feel like I let people down. I understand. He has to go so far as to say that he actually did kill someone. Mm. That is part of his truth that would have otherwise been left out. Okay. Um, what do you think, both of you guys, uh, is a reliable way to come to, like, a true conclusion? If there are differing personal truths, different mm -hmm. happening truths, different absolute... If I just cared about a true conclusion, mm -hmm. what's a reliable way for me to reach mm -hmm. that conclusion? Um, I guess compiling as much truth as possible. Compiling so I as, think that, I think that... Would you, by truth, do you mean true data? Or like reliable data, or like Maybe. testing. What do you, what do you... I'm so I'm more of an an okay. Even though I don't want to go into STEM, I am more of like a reasoning type person, analytical type person. So mm -hmm. I would say, to me at least, that while I agree that the happening truth by itself or the internal truth by itself, those don't give the full picture. Mm -hmm. I would go with the happening truth because that's what is experienced by more than one person. Right. So that's how I would jump to the truth. If you, you would just put more like, weight on the happening truth, the, yeah, the truth that seems yeah. that reality seems to work on, mm -hmm. rather than the personal interpretation of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, what what's a reliable way for me to come to a conclusion? Uh, if I want, if I if I live in a world where I only experience personal truths and I'm trying to mm -hmm. get as many absolute truths or happening truths mm -hmm. in a basket, to be like, okay, I do have these experiences, but of these experiences, I know these are rational and mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. based on xyz what's the method what's a good method for me to figure that out science science yeah katie what do you think um i she's more analytical as she pointed out i'm i'm much more interpretive of things and so i i often lean more towards um reading like i love poetry i love um reading books different stories like things that you might not really know if they're true or not because i think that Looking. Sorry, what was the question again? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Started going on a tangent. Ran away. So, uh, say I have an issue where I got a box of Tic Tacs. Uh, no, okay. let's re let's do it like this. I have a coin, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a trick coin. This is not a trick question. Okay. People always think it's a trick question. I don't know why. I got a, It's a quarter. I took stats. I, I know where this I took it. Go. I got it. It's on the back of my hand now. It's either yeah. heads or tails. There's mm -hmm. only two options. And I don't know if it's heads or tails right now. Yeah. Do you know Show if it's heads or tails cat. right now? Don't throw that out. <laughs> the last guy who brought that out. I stomached it, but <laughs> just for the record, all right, there's the 1980 interpretation of quantum mechanics. Okay. Schrodinger's cat is a mockery of the Copenhagen model of quantum mechanics, which basically says you're doing this wrong because you're basically superimposing perfect positions on top of each other as if you had a dead cat and a living cat. You can't do that. Yeah. That's You can't do that. That's yeah. obviously a joke. So he's making fun of him. Schrodinger's cat is a diss track. It's not a model for quantum <laughs> mechanics. It's one guy saying, this is how silly your thing is because basically if you put a cat in a box and I used your theory, that's all. I, that's what I have, a half dead, half living, neither cat. It's but we both weird. know that's silly, right? It's like, yeah, that's silly. I'll come up with a better model. And he did. Uh -huh. But then people just like the cat idea and now people throw that out as if that was an actual people. model. It's, it's, we're all it's YouTube people. ruining us. Anyway, back to the point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we got, we got, I don't know. Do you know what the Tetra tails right now? If no, you know, it you, is one way, but we can't it one or the other so I don't know perceive it so we're in a position where I could flip a thousand coins I could do a yeah. thousand science tests and I get 50 50 it's inconclusive mm -hmm. still so okay. I still don't know if this is heads or tails but I know it has to be one of the two mm -hmm. how could I come to a reliable conclusion <laughs> yeah. and until then yeah would I don't know probably be the best answer yeah 
that's yeah. that's I that's you one of to, my. That's opinions. what I'm saying. You have to accept that things are uncertain until they become certain. Yeah. I actually prefer saying I don't know as an option, huh. mm -hmm. as a, the most valid answer, until I have uh, enough evidence. information to yeah, come to a conclusive that's how decision. I make decisions. Um, what do you think if you have do you have a more reliable way to come I don't saying I don't know doesn't mean I'm done I yeah. can still look it up I can still work but I find like that's the best place to start where it comes to learning what do you think um I think as far as knowing whether it's heads or tails um, you know you would have to look because you don't know what it's gonna be um, I guess just what the heads and tails represents would you know as opposed to happening truth would mark whether you felt like you won or you lost something yeah so it's, if there was two people at this table and one guy said well i believe it's heads and the other person said i believe it's tails and neither of us looked at the coin and i'm my position is i yeah. don't know what should i be paying attention to that these two guys were telling me in order for me to see if they came to a reliable conclusion that that was heads or tails or not like what would i what would be a reliable method to come to a true conclusion a reliable method for heads or tails? Because I can guess, and I might be yeah. right, mm -hmm. but that's not a reliable way, in I my opinion, to get to I don't think there is a reliable way, because reliability is known as whenever you take a test and over, over again, you can get the same results. Mm. And you don't know if you're ever going to get the same, same results with something such as a 50-50 chance. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be valid, but I don't think it's going to be reliable. Okay. And it's interesting, because in this example, normally what we're talking about is, like, you know your inner truth, even if you don't know the happening yeah. truth. Mm. But what's interesting about that example is that the happening truth is still true, but yeah. you don't know your inner truth of what you think. Like, there you uh, go, yeah. And I think that's totally fine to just say you don't know it. Yeah. And that there might be an actual truth out there, totally fine with me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's a pretty good spot to just end it on, at least for mm -hmm. me. But, uh, yeah, I I think we, go, I think we went <laughs> to a lot of places. <laughs> my favorite place to go. <laughs> Can I ask one last question? Uh, both of you guys. Um, so we have ideas about personal truths and we have ideas about absolute truths. Uh, do you think it's important to recognize what it would look like if you're wrong about all these things that we're talking about right now? Let's yeah. say there's just a better idea out there that we just don't, both don't know about. Would oh yeah, I, I think there's always room to improve and always room to, to gain information about, not just about, you know, just information in general, but what others think of information. Okay. You know, I mean, I think that draws into the line almost of individual truth because you can look at something one way and somebody can look at it a completely different way. Hmm. And I think it's interesting how, you know, there are works or works of literature where you get to read and you get to like delve into what someone else is thinking. Right. What they think about yeah, something. Yeah, that's so, always entertaining, isn't it? Yeah, and so I feel like individual truth is almost an expression of like a human side. It sounds like you sense. see the beauty behind it yeah. more than... Yeah. Like, using it as a reliable way to come to true conclusions is that is that yeah. accurate okay like um like sylvia plath's um what is it her her, her poem cut it's about mm. her cutting her thumb mm. and so she expresses that but she also delves into the idea of this um it's interesting because her perception her reality of that is so chilling she says um what a thrill i have cut my thumb again or something like that wow and so it's it goes beyond the happening truth of her cutting her thumb and it draws into question you know what's going on what, in she, her mental what she's pulling out of it personally yeah, there's something yeah. deeper there so i think with each experience we have something um different i mean someone could be relieved by not having to look not knowing the certainty mm -hmm. and they could feel like they've won something already by not knowing if they have won or they have lost oh. or they could be thinking that they feel like they are stuck in this um what is it called like a purgatory oh, almost of oh. not knowing whether they won or they lost sure. so it's all about the difference in how someone interprets it mm. and so i think that's where individual goes into it goes into the human behavior and the human mind and how we see things so. okay but i'm gonna throw a pretty extreme statement out there do it you were talking about like what if there's a better method out there and so what I, if there was one i'm right, not saying right, there right, is but what right, if there right. was yeah no i i agree with the sentiment that it's always yeah. best to be open to new answers yeah and like new um facts about things and i think part of that is like it's killing me you're not in a stem field uh, it's <laughs> okay. literally you're taking well, here's... <laughs> everything out of me you're just like so, ah! so to the wind my, here's where my extreme statement comes in all okay, right north korea okay okay is that so extreme like, that's well, just a place. It's geography. No, no, no. That's geography. a place. But it's an extreme way of living. I feel you want to sit? Because do you want to sit down? I'm good. Okay. It's an extreme way of living there because they do not have access to all of the information that we do. So their reality is True. different. Yeah. Mm. They Definitely. think that reality is a certain way because that's all the information that they know. But mm -hmm. we know something different because right. we know more. So once they, if they get privy to that new information, they're 
ideas and beliefs about what reality is are going to be totally different right. now that they have more info. So I think it's always important to be accepting of new information right. and what it might change and mean. Mm. And at that point, the absolute truth, like as we go along with cultures, the absolute truth there influences the individual truth. Because as we learn new information, that absolute truth is constantly changing our mm. perceptions of things. Do you think the absolute truth, though, is more reliable than the personal or individual truth? I would say at least as a reliable. way of determining how reality works. Yeah, I mean, I'd say, I guess, if you want a more analytical, um, fact-based truth, I guess, happening truth or... I'm not saying that truth. personal truth is useless. I definitely no, think yeah, there's some I mean, great things we can yeah, derive yeah. from it. But as far as just reaching a true conclusion, mm -hmm. yeah. should we rely more on absolute truths than personal truths? I guess it depends on what truths? the conclusion is. Oh! Ooh. Or what part of it changes it up? I, I want to throw something out there that... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reposition the camera yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw something out there that she had said earlier, like... Well, she didn't actually say it, but I thought of it right before she said, like, wait, what was the question again? Mm. And that was, she was talking about, like, personal truths, and when we read something that someone else wrote or expressed, mm. that's how we understand their lived experience. So to me, literature here, it's like universal truths are like theme statements. Mm -hmm. And so when we read personal truths, that's how we connect with each other. And that's how we sort of get to see the bigger absolute truths where you might think like, I am the only person that feels like this. This is my personal truth. But when you read someone else's personal truth, you're like, wait a minute, that's a more universal experience. Can I realizing. throw something out at you? Even if I were to write down a book of what it was like to be, for example, a black guy, mm -hmm. I can write it down in vivid detail give it to you as a black male mm -hmm. i can give it to you guys and i don't know gender wars i'm not making any like universal statements here but you could read it mm -hmm. but you're still filtering it through your personal yeah. truth your right, personal yeah. so experience you can't, so you can't we can't live ever as you someone right uh in that case are you actually getting a reliable personal truth perspective of another person and is that ever possible not oh, my bad. Man, I this is going to be so bad in post editing. That we can really go. I apologize. <laughs> You're fine. Don't no, apologize. I'm talking to the camera. Oh. I'm weird. <laughs> um, I don't think that we can ever fully get 100% to someone else's because we are always going to have our bias to things. Hmm. That's just how we're predispositioned as people and, and humans. We, we, when we see something, when we think of something, we are already formulating our own opinions about things. Basically, so yeah. Either, as if we were reading your book, you know, we would already be formulating those opinions. Yeah. So I think you can give out your 100 percent truth but others may not fully receive all of it interesting I think we can try that makes me feel like try. if anything well one it's really cool that that's yeah. the case because it makes talking to people really interesting but two it also makes me feel like i can never be 100 percent confident hmm. with regard to ever understanding someone yeah. mm -hmm. or ever interpreting whatever they're telling me Except to 100 percent. it's that uncertainty to everything mm -hmm. ours I didn't ask you this question, and anytime you guys want to go, it's totally cool. Uh, yeah, not yeah. kicking guys out. I love the conversation, by the way. But uh, is there anything that you're 100% certain about? And if I had to ask you about that, I know you alluded to a story your father told you, but is there anything that you're 100% certain about? Right, okay, so the sun will continue to rise and set until, until it doesn't. It explodes and everything dies. Or uh, an alien steals it. You never know. Like, or what? until it, an alien comes and just zips right, it okay, away. Sure. Why Some not? technology. Why like, not? Um, they, they always have alien movies where they come down in a big spaceship with guns in their hands. I'm like, aliens are never going to do that if they're that smart to come over here. They're just going to, like, just turn up the temperature like two notches. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Do that just for like, like 50 years the and then cool it thing. back down and then we'll come and it's just, oh, everything's free. Look up. This is a Walmart. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Sorry. But it, anything you're 100% sure. looks like you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Anything you're absolutely 100% sure is true. Hey, what's up, guys? Mm. Nothing is immediately coming to mind for me. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, the fact that I exist, like, back to what I talked about earlier. Yeah. It's like, uh, I'm a little more existential than that. I, I mean, you could tell I me you exist, that. but I wouldn't be able to reliably know that absolutely yeah. true. I would yeah. be very, very confident that it was true. Like, maybe 99%. But I could, I couldn't. Repeating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I probably couldn't justify the 100. I could just be dreaming right now, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. that's because well, because that's the thing. Like, not so. What I'm not saying is like you can't. Okay, going back to what I was talking about earlier, you can't be certain that other people exist, but you can be certain that you exist. Yes. Or so I'm told. But like at the same time, you know what you're saying? Like you could, just, you could be dreaming. Like who knows? True. It's uh, but. Uh, but I guess you have to exist in order yeah. to dream. Have so. you ever heard of the Descartes principle of I think, therefore I am? You've heard that well, before? Well, I've definitely heard of I Think Therefore I Am. Okay, there was like a guy named Rene Descartes. He was okay. a mathematician, and he was a philosopher, and he came up with this idea of there's this thing called, um, 
um, hard solipsism, which is basically, it's impossible to know anything. So he's like, I will defeat that. And a lot of people couldn't try to, a lot of people couldn't defeat that. But he was like, so what, if I can't know anything, let's see if we can falsify that argument. Because it's always important to know Mm -hmm. what it looks like if something's wrong. So he came up with the concept of, I think therefore I am. So like, even if there was a a weird alien or demon who was basically making him have a hallucination of his existence, it would have to be acting on an agent, which would be him. So maybe he wouldn't be Rene Descartes, but he knows that whatever it is that's being acted on is his identity or him at that moment. And therefore, if he's thinking about it, he knows he exists, which is kind of a cool thing. So I think the only... I like that. (laughs) So solipsism then changed to... You can't know anything except for the fact that you exist. Yeah? I also think that you could also know that you don't know something. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still playing with that idea a little bit. Right. No, I like that too. Well, because like you don't... Do you want to share this seat with me? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad. I um, feel bad. So... Ah, shoot. What I was going to say. A thing. Something about... You can't know that you don't know. Okay, so it's like, I, it's I, sort of, yeah, it goes back to the idea of like, you don't know the things that you don't know. Yeah, and I can test that, mm-hmm. and you can put me in an MRI, you can put a gun to my head, I can demonstrate that I don't know something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can be absolutely confident that I don't know Couldn't it. Couldn't we also say that you know what you know? You know what you know. Well, no, because what if everything's not real? What is something, you well, know that you... You know what you, what you already know, what you're already certain of. So... And if you know what you know, then you implying that you don't know what you don't know could you give me an example of something that you know that you know um well something that i know like right now is earlier i heard a bird chirping but right now what i know that i know is that i can't hear that bird anymore okay so we can only know as much as we know right now and we can experience other things through how others see it did you know that there's a condition where people like spontaneously start to like lose their hearing at certain no no ranges. not that not that i was gonna well she's just got hearing problems uh, i yeah. was gonna say like um like there's a condition and the example i can think of is like there's this guy and so like if you like close your eyes you can picture what a tree looks like okay mm-hmm. but like there's a condition where like a guy would close his eyes and would not be able to picture what a tree looks like like oh, he cannot recall something if he's not looking at it okay yeah. which that's really inter- i don't know what that's called or what that even is about but he might know what a tree is though I guess that would go into question, what do you, what does it mean to know something? Yeah. Does it mean to visualize it or to know about it? Yeah. To I know do, of it? I would say something that you know is something that you can demonstrate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, something that, like, yeah. you can, if I gave you a test, yeah. you can, you can you prove that you way. know it. Yeah. Okay, like, we yeah. can test it, we can observe mm-hmm. it, or we can do some sort of thing where we conceptualize it and come to an understanding, like, ah, uh, based on okay, this so test, you can prove a, that you Here's the fun it. thing. I, so like, I really like Katie's thing, but we're going to go to Emma's thing real quick. But Katie, we're going to get back to that well, it's bird not, it's thing. It's the same thing. It's All the right. same thing about like, oh, okay, the bird thing. Yes. Yeah, bird thing. That. Yeah, bird yeah. thing. Okay, but quick thought. Quick thought. Go for we it. We know it. colors, right? Do we know colors? But that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. If we took a test yes. and they were like, here it is, yeah. I would say that's red and you would say that's red, but we don't know that we're perceiving that the exact same exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Different people have different colored eyes. Right. And huh? no, I don't think any two people have the exact same color eye yeah so who knows so, like, why my we're green is not your green is not your yeah. green might be so, a little like, bit different really know it yeah. yeah yeah we know what we know as mm. in like you know what you know mm. you Back know what you know truths. i know what i know mm. and we might not be able to see the same thing is there a possibility that you might be hearing the bird right now but just not paying attention to it and therefore you're just not oh yeah definitely it? i think that's uh that's called i think habit hab- habitation mm-hmm. where there's a noxious stimulus and you just like Get over like if it, you're so then you would yeah, just you kind of drown it out. It. So your brain it's like just your automatically nose in between your vision. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah your sense. brain just <laughs> automatically processes it to you where it's not even in your consciousness. If anymore. that's a possibility, yeah, can you be justified at being hundred percent confident that you know that you're not hearing that bird right now? Um, ooh, I like that. I think it has to do with maybe with awareness. Per se, you are aware, aren't you? Yeah. So, well, we tend to tune things out as we get to a routine, and I think we miss a lot of things throughout our day. I think. Yeah. Um that if we stop when we think about you know where we are you know we can draw into a lot more awareness so as a person who's susceptible to like bouts of different levels of awareness Mm -hmm. can you really be justified at 100 percent confident that you're not experiencing some stimuli that you may not be aware of so uh, so like if you tune things out how can you be confident that you're not tuning something out at any given moment yeah like i do hear birds chirping right now how do you know it's not that same bird 
Oh, you don't know if it's the same bird. I don't. You can't. If you be don't know that, can you be a hundred percent confident that you know that it's not the bird? No, you can't. Okay. I don't think you can. I think I am certain in the fact that I, I don't think that we can ever like get to where we're going truly. I think that all we can do is try. I know? like trying. Yeah. I oh, think that, the effort is definitely yeah. still worth it. Um, and I, I, if there's only one thing that you guys take away from this, it's absolutely worth that journey. Yeah. Even if the conclusion itself is an ideal, uh -huh. it's definitely worth questioning. Definitely worth, mm -hmm. you know, trying to never be absolutely 100%. Because in my opinion, whenever you're 0% or 100%, you've closed That's your mind. That's dangerous. Yeah. And yeah. you're sort of like, I don't need any more information. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm absolute. I, I, I want this to be the case. Yeah. As long as you're open, even if it's 99.9999, whatever, you're at least open to something changing your mind, mm -hmm. raising or lowering your own confidence in the future. And I that's always great. I think if we're trying, I think that, I think it's dangerous to try to answer a question. I think it's better to always ask questions because then we're always constantly questioning what we think mm. and we're always trying to learn something, if that makes sense. I think, I guess another thing I'm certain in is the ability to question. Okay. To, instead of sitting here saying, I know the answer, I'm good to go. Instead, looking at something and wanting to always know more. Good. You know, being open-minded to different opinions and different sayings and just all of the above. Good. So. Katie had a wonderful talk. Emma had a wonderful talk with you. Listen, STEM might sound boring and strict, and I know your dad might make it seem really nerdy, like maybe just uh, walks around with suspenders and stuff. It. <laughs> but it's a beautiful art form, and there's a bunch of stuff to be discovered still. And I think you guys, I think we would be at a severe loss without you guys contributing to it in some field. Do it as a hobby, even if you don't, if you if you don't want to do it as a profession. And it's always an option available to you. But I'm glad you guys are focusing about school. Glad you guys are really open-minded. Really appreciate this talk. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Not a problem. Thank is you. Is this guys. for a class? No, this is a personal hobby. Yeah. I I just. Cool. Like talking to people about things that they strongly believe in, and seeing if what how they got so certain about that thing, uh -huh. and then what it would take for them to change their mind. I'm just trying to take people who are at 100, mm percent -hmm. maybe see if we can bring them down to like maybe 99, or at least That's have the opportunity to be like. Yeah. Anything I do. <laughs> my coolest hobby is like my one New Year's resolution was like I'm gonna discover more of the place I was born before I leave. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And so I'll just have conversations. I think we've talked about what did we talk about today so far? You guys are the fourth people, fourth fifth. Mm -hmm. Um we talked about some I'm trying to remember the names. Who's the guy who was just here the Oh, well, a lady who's from Colombia and she wanted to figure out a way to like help people. Yeah. And we're like, okay, how are you gonna help people? And she wanted to do architecture. And we're like, okay, so how are you helping people with architecture? We're just digging down into the belief. And she found that she, what she ultimately wanted to do was, since she was from Colombia, she had noticed that there was an industry that was like looting the area. Huh. And she wants to develop through our architecture a means of like designing a better way for industry to throw away their stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was just cool that just from a five minute talk, we were able to like get to something really productive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I asked her like, really, what else is there? If you couldn't do that, like, why else would you still do it? And she's like, really, I want to do something that motivates me and makes me happy. And I was like, that makes sense too. So yeah, like, we, we saw that lady when we came in and I was like, oh, Katie, they're doing an interview. Don't, <laughs> don't interrupt this. <laughs> Is that what you were saying? I couldn't Yeah, hear. yeah, I know. <laughs> you thought she was saying, look out for the dogs? <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, she was saying something. I knew she was saying something. I didn't know yeah. yeah, you should probably let me know when you don't hear the things I say. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great yeah. talk, guys. See ya. Stay dry. I think it's about Yeah, I brought soon. a raincoat. I don't know. Yeah, well, you. apparently the weather app is 100% certain it's going to rain at 9 p.m. Yeah, I saw that too. I think I should probably pack up now too. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank I had a wonderful you. talk. This thank is the highlight you. of the day for sure. See you guys. Bye.